in my quest to leave a mark on the culture and make hip hop proud, I'd like to welcome you all to another episode of The Essence. I am your host, KB Tyndall, and The Essence is presented by Tent TV and powered by Validated Magazine. Today on The Essence, I have a brother whose discography would put the majority of artists to shame. The numbers might be a little bit off from what I found, but there's about 87 releases dating back to 1998, which includes about 40 albums, 40 EPs mixed in with an, uh, an uncounted amount of singles, 504 feature appearances, and 814 credits to his name. He is a bar lord staple when you mention West Coast hip hop, and he hails from West Fresno, California. He has worked with too many artists to actually name, but just to name a few, there's been Tyler Kweli, 38 Special, and Ghostface. He recently dropped another project with producer extraordinaire Apollo Brown, titled Sardines, which is the follow-up to their 2017 release, Anchovies. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to this episode of The Essence, the one and only King Medallions, AKA Planet Asia. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace, King. Peace, peace, peace. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, bro. Yeah, man, I'm glad you're here too, bro. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Let, first of all, man, let me let me commend you, man, on on you know being the consummate hustler, a, a, a pure MC. Um, like I said, man, most people that got 30 years in the game haven't done half as much work that you've put in. Um, what what kind of motivates you to keep? putting out work and keeping your pen sharp after all these years, man? Um, Like I tell, tell most people, man, I, I never really lost the, the youth, the youthful side of me. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm still like a fanatic about this, about this culture right here. So it's not, it's not, that never really left me. It's not really, of course, you know, you get older, life does this thing, you know, bills and whatever, but that's, that's inevitable because I was, you know, most of us was paying bills before we was famous anyway. So, you know what I'm saying? So right, right. that, 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 that's not really the factor. It only becomes a factor when, you know, it can be times where, well, when the earlier times, it would be like, you know, money get low. I got to go do something. I got to go, you know, make a record or do this, that, and the third. And um, mm -hmm. that's when I feel like sometimes people can sacrifice the music or whatnot. But I never, I never was the type that can actually go in the studio and, make some shit that that was that was like the opposite of what i wanted to make so it was like i didn't get into this to make bubble gum popcorn stuff it's like i can't yeah that ain't what i'm in this for like that little child in me is still always like man that's corny like don't do that like you know what i mean like yeah yeah fuck that don't do that you know don't be like one of these cats you know yeah no doubt so it's just the hip it's that hip-hop that we come from that was so arrogant that we just can't you know Hell no. It's like, no, I don't care what everybody doing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. Um, what's your earliest memory of hip hop in the culture? I mean, my first concert was uh the Fresh Fest, uh Run DMC, Time Max Social Club, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Houdini. Um, I think Dougie Fresh was on that show, but I missed I I, can't, I caught the tell end, tell L -N, tell N. LL Cool J. You know what I mean? Uh, I think was Beastie Boys on that tour? They might have been on that tour, but it was just crazy, bro. Yeah, I remember you know the saying? Christmas, bro. <laughs> yeah, and then I went to the uh, Def, yeah. the Def Jam Christmas where L came with uh, Eric Grand Rakim. That was crazy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, you talk about my era, man. I grew up in Queens, New York, so so that whole yeah. Fresh Fest era, LL Run DMC, like I, I was raised yeah. there. You know what I, I mean? That's what I was born out of. I come out of that. You know what I'm saying? That's That's... Yeah. That's my foundation of, of like what what made me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because that you talking about 1986, and I was you know I'm always talking about that show because the the the, the interesting thing about that show in 1986, Too Short was the opener. Mm. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a like almost like a local opener, but even though he's not from Fresno, but it was like. They was, you know, he had the local opener type thing because they had the curtain still closed and he, he had a hit out that everybody knew. So it was like once he got on stage and everybody knew the song, you know what I'm saying? It was just like <laughs> he had it lit, you know what I mean? That's that that freaky tales and all that shit spreading like wildfire and uh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it was 
it was uh, Freaky Tales, and uh, it was uh, but at that time he had uh, a song called uh, uh, "Don't Do It" or uh, 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 no, "Girl." It's called "Girl." Girl, that's right. your life. It was called "That's Your Life." Right, right. And that shit was big. That was like a that was like an anti drug record. You know what I mean? Right, right. But it was the slapper though. That. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Crazy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Classic <laughs> short <laughs> shit. Yeah, man, straight B boy, D boy rap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gold ropes and t shirts. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. hell yeah, that was, that was yeah, beepers. Thing. Beepers and five hundred ones, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we do. So that uh, that that's my whole, you know, my posture comes from Too Short, LL Cool J, Run DMC. It, bro, bro, if you go back and look at all they pictures, bro, they all got the same posture, even down to Too Short, bro. Mm -hmm. They all standing, they all standing like this. Mm -hmm. if, if they not standing in it like this, the b boy, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they standing like this. <laughs> And both of those are the b-boy stance. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so like so when you see a nigga going like going like this, like expressing mm -hmm. himself like this, yeah, he's from a certain era. Yeah, no doubt. When niggas doing all this gay hand movements, that ain't from our era. <laughs> niggas from our era, we express very direct, like yeah. It, it, you know what I'm saying? In anybody that's from that seventies, eighties. That was our tough guys, you know what I'm saying? Dudes yeah. that was kind of like, whatever, nigga, what's up? You know, it's that what's up attitude. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, it was just, it was just a different type of, uh, a different different type of energy. It, it wasn't even as classless as you would even want to say mm -hmm. it is today. You know what I'm saying? I knew Stone Cold dudes that would, that didn't even cuss, but they would fuck you up. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, it, you know that that era was just a different era. Even at you know, Fresh Fest, that wasn't like some lightweight shit to go to either. Like no. you know, people be talking about these concerts like it wasn't mm. violent and that shit. Super shit violent. <laughs> you, the, 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 the <laughs> was getting beat the fuck up at the shows. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All the time. It wasn't a show that I went to that somebody wasn't getting beat up. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. So I know you've heard this a million times, man, but this is my first time interviewing you. Um, where did you get? Uh, when did what? At what age did you get knowledge of self? First of all, and then I know you've heard before that you sound like a like a like a an East Coast MC with mm -hmm. the accent. Who inspired right. that flow early on? Like I'm thinking, like it had to be like the God the God MC Rakim and a few others that are cut from that kind of cloth. But but you tell most me definitely, most definitely, it's definitely uh that when the switch came, when the switch went from. The LLs, because I wasn't I wasn't really rhyming uh when in the during that fresh fresh era time. Mm -hmm. That was just me being a, a child on some like we you know, we break dance outside, but we was more playing sports at that time. You know, I, I was like in the what shit. When radio came out, I was like in the fourth grade or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I was still like Kirk. Right, right, so yeah, right. I was like in the fourth grade when that album dropped. You know what I'm saying? Right. By the time he came out with I'm bad, I might have been like in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. fifth or sixth grade right so then boom and i remember uh because see back then back then it was like i, I didn't we didn't call him rock him it used to be like eric b right you heard mm -hmm. that new eric b right mm -hmm. and it would be like the first paid for album it made me be like damn dual voice is crazy like he it's something different but when it really switched, like when 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 the styles switched, I would have to say that second album though, the mm. follow the leader, the follow yeah, the leader yeah. album, yeah, yeah, that follow the leader album, and, and can't forget Kane's first album, Long Live the Kane. It's a mixture of it's like painful, and then Long Live the Kane. About time Long Live the Kane came, Follow the Leader was dropping because Follow the Leader mm -hmm. dropped when Your TV Raps came out, remember? Right. So that's like 88, 89, like eighty nine. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in that area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember, because they used to use "Follow the Leader" as like the one of the one of the opening video. Oh yeah, for yeah, the for the. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's when it you know first came out, and I remember that video, seeing that video, 
when you're on TV Raps debut and shit, and I was like, yo, he took it to another level. Like, mm. like, like, oh, because you know, at that time, even during paying for L was still that dog, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, L was still heavy in, in 80. For them two, yeah, them, it, well, it, really it, three. I mean, like, really, like three, them, them, them three, like, uh, uh, four, four, I'll say four, because a lot of people don't like to uh, count walking with a panther. I count walking with a panther. That shit was, it was just ahead of his time. Walk, he was walking way ahead of his panther, time with that. <laughs> yo, yo, walking with a panther is basically the jiggy era before the jiggy era, but the yo, fly jiggy because he had the battles on. It on him for that because because that was the Afrocentric. That was the era. that was the Afrocentric era. Yeah. But he was rocking the he was rocking the green valleys with the with the dab of that leather four finger ring. He had the bottle of Moet. Yeah, come on, bro. He was already doing what cats yep. barely started doing, like in the two thousands, right? Yep. Um, early. So, early. so like those four four albums is like you know you got that. Mama said knock you out is when he kind of came back because they they considered his fall off walking with a panther. Mm -hmm. He came back mm -hmm. on the mama said knock you out, right? He had his thing, but by the time by the time Jingle the Baby and all that came out, Kane and Rakim was like the new computer. You know what I'm saying, like. If you wasn't rhyming at that level, you got to think I'm under them. I come from I, I'm, I'm I'm ages under them, so right. My my growth and development was being able to learn how to rhyme, how to rhyme all those styles at right. a young age. Right, right. So you go back to any of my demos, even pre like because people know me where I'm from and from my crew, but I was rhyming even before that. Mm -hmm. I started rhyming with them when I was like you know thirteen and fourteen. Okay. I was already rhyming. You know what I'm saying? I already had. Been to the studio and all that from the age of nine. I right, said, okay. dude, already knocking on my door. Grown man, yo, excuse me, Miss Green, can um, is it possible that uh, we set our equipment up so we can record your grandson? <laughs> right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Because I'm like, yo, you gotta ask her because you know my grandmother mean as hell, and <laughs> if, if you want to do it at these hours, man, you're gonna have to holler at her. You better talk to her nice and act like you a square or something. You're like, <laughs> don't come in here on no. On the you know what I mean? Like, you got to come here with your shirt button up. You feel me? <laughs> so I remember, like, that era, you know? And that's, yeah. that was my growth and development. And um, I would say that was, like, the Rakim Kane stage. Right, right. And then by the time I got with my crew, we was, like, that's when, like, the Nubian, brand Nubian mm -hmm. leaders of the new school. That, you know, that whole mm -hmm. night. I'm a product of that. You got to think. 1990, I'm in the ninth grade, Lord. Hey, you, yeah, you were still young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. perfect. I'm in the yeah. perfect time. Yeah, you grew up to yeah, be to be yeah. a ninth grader in yeah. 1990. Yeah. You born in the perfect time, the bro. Brand Nubians dropped and shit. Come like, on, bro. You I'm born like in you was a sponge at that time. You was a sponge. You was just soak all that shit up. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't even. You know, so when people be like, um, "You sound like a uh, East Coast artist," you gotta understand, man. I don't come from an era where we knew what coast we was on first. You talking about right. the '80s? Mm -hmm. That what West Coast and East Coast, bro. I'm I'm eight and nine years old, bro. Right, right, right. I don't know what a West Coast or an East Coast is, bro. Right, right. You just I, yo to keep it a buck to keep it a buck. This is why you know why I love Queen so much. Mm. Well, I heard a cat say this one time. I think it was Jungle, and I was like, yo, this is exactly how I how I, I see it. He was like, yo, man, I thought Queen's Bridge made up here, pop. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like, I thought we made this shit up. Like, you know me? Yeah, when I was, yeah. I thought that shit came from where I came from, G. Right, right. I right. thought we made that shit up. Right, right. I start on my mom. I thought my city made up hip hop. Right, right. Okay, That's so crazy. we have to be clear here on that. And I know everybody got their pride, but mm -hmm. I love New York. Trust me, I respect right, right. all that. But bro, my in my mind, my growth and development, I had everything I needed. In my city, bro, I, I'm not one of them dudes that was like, um, looking at TV and like biting and shit. I wasn't doing mm. that. I, I would look at, I would look at what dudes would do and see if I could top it. Mm. Okay. Like, like, like anybody that I love, just, just know whoever my favorite artist is. I want, I always wanted to be better than. I like, uh, I never was. I oh, never, man. I never had the glaze in my eye for right. another artist. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Because being that I'm a student of hip hop, I learned everything from hip hop. So it's like, you know, get off my dick and tell your bitch to come here was a very pivotal part mm -hmm. of my DNA. Like, mm -hmm. don't never ride another person's dick. You know, right. even if you love a, another artist, you know, 
yo, your shit is fired. Dope. And keep it moving. And, and beat it. Keep it moving. Yup. Yep. Keep, keep it moving. Yep. Today, motherfucker be drunk, all in your ear, don't know how to wear it out. They welcome. Da da da. They don't even know nothing about the rules of bro. You looking real, real <laughs> weird right now. <laughs> trying to talk to me like we been knowing each other forever. Like, yeah. like yo, and I'm looking at dudes like, yo, you don't feel weird right now? Like, yeah. you know, I don't know you, bro. You're looking groupy as fuck, bro. <laughs> yeah, or somebody be like, you know, and I'm not trying to be bad because I'm, I, I try to be cordial yeah. to everybody, but don't be trying to like tell me about a blunt I might have passed you in 2002 on my way. Bro, I don't fucking remember that. Right, 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 right. Yo, it's people, it's people that know my, it's, yo, it's artists that I know. That mm-hmm. I know know my music, that I know know me, that I wouldn't even ask that, and I wouldn't even say that shit to. Me. Right, 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 right. That I've been on the road with in France, and it, I won't be like, "Yo, you remember uh 2009 when we was the Czech Republic?" <laughs> Yo, no, bro, no, fuck. That's a platinum artist, bro. This, this motherfucker been on private jets and all kinds. Move of Move around the fucking world. That. He ain't gonna remember that that one bro, little bro. like that. Nah. That nigga done popped shrooms and all kind of shit in between that time. <laughs> you barely raced out of that data, bro. For real, for real. <laughs> you did not a factor. So, you know, the, all that all that in the DNA of hip-hop, man, like, yeah. I was literally raised on what this was, but now as far as knowledge itself, my spark comes from a FOI member named Raheem, who used to sell books in my hood. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So um uh the thing was okay, so back in the day, they you know how they used to have all the memorabilia, you know, Malcolm X t-shirts, Martin Luther King t-shirts, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela was just getting out of out of jail during that time, you know, the whole South African right. apartheid uh 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 UN what was this uh what was this movement? Uh was it UNA or UN? I forget. I, I know what you're talking about, but I forget it right now. Or ANC or something. I forgot. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, and I remember I had a, uh, I had, he used to, Raheem used to sell books. He used to have like the Malcolm X books, uh, Message to the Black Man. I didn't even know nothing about Elijah Muhammad at this point yet. Mm-hmm. So what happened was I had this shirt that I had, I got from probably the swap mall or some flea market or something. And it had like, it had Holly Selassie. It had uh, I want to say it had uh, Patrice Lumumba, uh, Farrakhan, Malcolm X, and the middle was Elijah Muhammad, right? Okay. And you know that Kofi was just like with the stars and the crescent and the moon for a child. I'm like, yo, who is that? Like, mm. like I, I immediately wanted to know who that was. Like, yo. On some like superhero shit, like yo, all, I, okay, I, I know what a, I've seen a turban before. I've seen this, right, right, and I, you know, I kind of seen a kufi like that, a kufi before, but I ain't never seen nothing like this. With a, who is this dude with these stars and, and, and this moon on his head? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I never knew who that was, and so I remember it was like all this happened at the same time. So my cousin, he ends up. Coming down that summer, this is the summer that uh that year I think I'm turning 13. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I might be, I might be turn no, I might be turning 12 actually. And so uh I had that show and I was like, yo, because I know he was smart, he knew some stuff. I was like, dude, I was like, who is this dude right here? It's Elijah Muhammad. Once I found out who Elijah Muhammad was, and then it was already like the hip hop was kind of like already doing that too at the same time. So it was like like I said, being born at the same time, being born at a certain time where the music and the people were literally outside right. pushing that, mm-hmm. you know, getting up, having a new book for me was like getting a, a new pair of sneakers, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, like how kids be about Da Vinci and, and Louis Vuitton, we we was like that about, you know, uh, introduction to African civilization right. and, uh, you know, the autobiography of Malcolm X and, mm. you know, uh, 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 what was the, uh, what was the other books we used to, we, I had so many, but I had, I had all kind of esoteric books though, like, cause my, my, my ride partner, his father is an African, is an African professor at the college. Okay. So we had a lot of Afro, Afrocentricity. Now when my knowledge came, I would say that as far as like being a 5% of being exposed to the a large 5% is that when we was going through our whole FOI thing, 
during that time, my brother uh, Supreme hit me. And I guess, you know, some of the first one, which is, I'm actually related to, to them now, but at that time, I didn't, we was just young as I didn't, you know, they was across town cats. He come, he come up to me at, at the bus stop on our way back home because all the buses used to meet and all the different high school kids. So if you if you went to another school and I went to another school, we would probably end up seeing each other at this downtown spot because that's where everybody transfers to get on the bus to go back to their side. Because you a lot of us that was from the west side, we would go to school on the north side. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't want to, who wants to fucking stay in their hood? You know, <laughs> when you're a kid, you're like, I, I want to see the breezes yeah. on the other side. I want to go to school over there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. that's how we was doing it. So he like, the black man is God. I'm like looking at him like he's out of his mind. Like, mm -hmm. what? Because he said it so far. And it's crazy because it wasn't like I never heard that before. But he said it in a sense like, like, nigga, we the ones that put the sun there. You know what I'm saying? Like, like all this is up. like, nah, the black man is God. He wasn't leaving me no room for right. no mystery, nothing. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. And he was being very aggressive about it to the point where I almost want to punch him in the face. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But my man is a live wire, so I wasn't going to punch him in the face any part of my crew. But it was kind of like a, you know, I had a, a resistance to it at first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And I think my resistance was my, it was part of my ego, but then, you know, when, 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 when dudes started trying to press me about anything about lessons, I would get on some gangster shit because I would be like, you're not for, by you not being from my side of town, I, I don't give a fuck if I'm wrong, nigga. Like, mm. I'm God now because I beat you up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And or you're gonna get jumped by somebody over yeah, there. Cause right, I right. I can't be touched. I'm from the most violent, the most violent people love me. So right, five percent right. or not, you're gonna have to just respect me for not knowing. Right, 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 right. Now that, let me see. That you. was a big thing back then too. All that word is bond. I should give my life shit. Let me see you try that shit with me. Right, right, right. Yes. Because my whole thing was, it's already in me. Even if I don't know, if I'm willing to do that, mm -hmm. if I'm willing to go about it that way, then you gotta just let me in. Right. It's like you, it ain't. This is me. And a lot of and the the funny thing about it is, a lot of those dudes fell off, and they not even with this no more. So mm -hmm. they was never this. It was never anybody that say I used to be a five. You was never a five percenter. Mm -hmm. Ain't ain't no such thing as a five percenter that'll tell you he used to be a five percenter. Because right. if you understand what this is, it's ain't got. This is not a religion, God. Mm -hmm. This is this, a five percenter. Somebody who teaches. I don't want to go deep into the sixteenth degree. It's just a person that teaches. Now, right. if you against teaching, that's on you. If you against teaching the truth, mm -hmm. what's the actual truth? That's mm -hmm. on you. Right, you can go right. study whatever. You can go study whatever. Buddhism gonna. If you not being truthful, then yeah, you yeah you are used to be five percent. I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now I'm. I'm I, you ain't never gonna hear me say I used to be a five percent. Even if tomorrow I take my shahada, right, 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 as a as a traditional Muslim, Muslim right, 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 I'm still a five percent. Okay, gotcha. There's right. nothing. There's nothing that I ever take that, like I'm born this way. I was born to be like this. You know how I know? Because even when I was a baby and I barely could talk, when, when well, I was talking at a very young age, like you know, two. I was talking at one, but full. I was having full conversations by two. Mm -hmm. When I used to hear all that God in the sky shit, even then I used to be like, ain't no God in the sky. Because mm -hmm. as a child, and you break it down to that level, I used to be like, yo. I already didn't believe in Santa. I already knew Santa Claus was fake. And I'm like, y'all right. giving me another Santa Claus? Is I'm like, as a kid, I knew a lot of shit was like, Tooth Fairy was fake. I'm like, mom, I know mom giving me this dollar. I never was, I never believed in that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ever. It was never a time I believed in anything mm -hmm. that was mystery. Right. So the science of the black man being God is the total mystery. The mystery God is me. Mm -hmm. That mystery that they looking for is in front of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A mystery, even a because even a mystery has to exist in real life, or it don't exist at all. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So a mystery God has to exist. The the mystery God is the black man. Got you. Well, that's, that's the biggest secret. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest secret in the world. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest secret yeah. that ain't the biggest secret. That's not a secret. Mm -hmm. Is that the black man is God. We the only peoples that go against that. Mm. 
Only, only the people, only the gods go against God. Mm -hmm. Only can God, only a God can make a God believe that he's not one. Right, 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 right. You understand what I'm saying? Got you. Yeah. So even in even in our low, even in our lower self, as far as you know, people catching the 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 the, the, the white man's holy ghost or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. We even even in that stage, we're still showing and proving that the black man is God. Uh, yeah, got you, got you. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so like, yeah, <laughs> that's how I, I got my knowledge. I have, you know, I, if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a bill, I'm a bill for real. Right, 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 right. But I'm showing you how how I am in this mm -hmm. culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. my name is powerful. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that means I have the ability to change things. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it not just me, all of us do. Because that's who, who we are collectively. We're powerful people. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We we've been changing things from the beginning of time. Man, look, they use look, the average restaurant is giving you ranch dressing for your wings. That was some ghetto shit at first. <laughs> I remember when I first saw somebody dip their wings in ranch dressing, I was like, Yeah, what kind of ghetto shit is this? Yo. You know now it's regularly so regular and it's like that with everything that we fucking do. Everything you feel what I'm saying? Do. Yeah, it turns out to later on, now it's this big fat. It's a delicacy and every, now. And everybody's a part of it. it this it's always been like that, bro. It's gonna always be that way. We're gonna always you know, today is a girls doing the college early. Big lips. Now everybody wants everybody big lips. Everybody want it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. And high Absolutely. cheekbones. They Absolutely. want big lips and high cheekbones. Yep. Absolutely. So, yo, um, I had the pleasure of interviewing Apollo Brown and, and Raz Cass back when they did the Blasphemy Project. Right. Now, you guys are two full projects in 2017's Anchovies, this year's Sardines. What's the science behind the title Sardines? Because every it's an acquired taste. Everybody don't <laughs> fuck with sardines. <laughs> Just like everybody don't fuck with drumless beats. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a lot of people like, oh, man, I love, I, I would love if they just did an album with some drums. Like, yo, that was <laughs> the whole thing behind this, bro. Uh, we, you know, we, it's, it's, it's a quiet taste. Either you in or you out. Got you, got you. You know, everybody don't like anchovies. Everybody don't like sardines. Yeah, no, I, no, I get it. I, I definitely understand that. And that's, no, to me, yeah. to me, that's hip hop because hip hop is like, we don't give a fuck if you like it. Nah, it's that you do what you want. You do what you want to do. Yeah. That, that, that's what made Beastie Boys so ill. Because I'm going to keep it a buck. Oh, when, when I first saw Beastie Boys perform, we mm -hmm. didn't know that they was white yet. Mm -hmm. My first time seeing Beastie Boys is me realizing that they were I didn't know they were white until I mm -hmm. actually seen them perform. Mm -hmm. I, had all, I had already heard the music, bro. You got to think. When Fresh Fest, when I seen Fresh Fest, there was no videos on TV yet. Yeah. Well, not maybe not out here. Maybe not out here, but in New York, there was. I'm saying where I'm from, right. it wasn't on TV yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was like, yeah. I, I might have caught Crush Group, and even in Crush Group, I didn't realize that was Beastie Boys. Right. So, right. Right. Because you got to think when I heard like Paul Revere and uh, uh, what's what's the uh, uh no sleep to Brooklyn, <laughs> all that. Yeah. They sounded like some wild ass black dudes, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We did. So they when did. we saw yeah. them, when we saw them, we lightweight started booing at first because we just uh, automatically was just mm -hmm. white people not supposed to rap, right? They killed the show, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on some, you know, I had never at that time you ain't even seen nobody pouring beer on stage or uh, shit like that. Nope, nope. They was wilding, so it they, was like, yep. yo, they, they started all of that. Yeah. They brought that element, and that it's that it's that element. That's gonna always keep this shit fresh. That's why the sardines, you know, you get the vinyl, it smells like fish. It's mm. like, it's like some, some like if we was in college playing a big joke on everybody, like, yeah, but they get this vinyl, it's, that shit gonna stink. You know what I mean? Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's ill little yeah. shit like that. That's that makes hip hop what it is, man. No doubt. No it's doubt. like it's like if, if Biz Marky would have gave you a fake bugger on his record or something. So like the the standout tracks for me, the joints that I fuck with, uh of course peas and onions. I know, right? Uh get the dough off, stones, fly anomalies, mm -hmm. acid rain, 88 S curl is my shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
I fucked with that shit heavy on some on some light skin nigga shit. Yeah, some light skin nigga shit. You already know it. I fuck with you heavy on that one. We have to do it for the light skin niggas, man. We have to. We brought light skinny niggas all the way back with that for one. Real. I fuck with that joint heavy. As soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, this is my go-to right here. Hey, hey, that intro is fucking hilarious, right? S <laughs> curls. Oh man. <laughs> man. Yeah, that was me and Ty, me, me and Ty, all we do is kick light skinned uh jokes all day. So I was like, when we do this song, bro, we gotta go all the way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. What's your what's uh, your favorite joint on the album? Uh, outside of peas and onions, mine's is I like broad broad Dan. Okay. Yeah, I like that because I like it's that first line when I go uh 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 uh, uh the game is fake like these Hollywood bitches up a lip. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that's it all right there. I'm like I'm glad. I'm glad I said that line. It's like I got a few lines on there where where I'm glad nobody else said because every night every blue moon a rapper say something I'll be like, damn that shit's so ill. I wish I I wish that was my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you I'm niggas to be mad at me. You know who who, who do that to me a lot sometimes? Who that? Fucking Drake, man. Yeah. <laughs> Drake can say some shit and I'll be like, man, I wish I said that. <laughs> Did he come up with that shit? I'm like, yo, that one was, I'm like, that one was too ill. So it'd be like little, it'd be, but it'd be the most simplest shit where I'd be like, wow, I didn't think of that. Like, fuck, yeah, that was clever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Crazy, crazy. Um, who's the one artist or the or the one producer that makes you step your pen game up when you're in the studio, man? Um, will I am? Will I am really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is that? So, that's I, I, that's not an answer that I was expecting at all. Well, it's a um, it's no, it's not even a pressure thing. It's just that he's so good that you want to be just as good as him. Mm -hmm. On the, you know, what I'm saying like the way he makes music, bro. If people saw how this dude does this shit, man, um, it's because like, dude is literally. Walking technology, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like he's beyond a fucking drum machine, bro. Right, right. He was beyond a drum machine twenty years ago, bro. Mm -hmm. Like he's like low key. Like if Elon Musk was was on like a DJ Khalil, Dr. Dre type level of producer. Like if Elon Musk knew how to really make beats. Right, right, right. And I mean, what I mean by like that, he has that tech that tech mind. Mm -hmm. Like he's already like 40, 50 years ahead like of us, bro. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like I be when when you're around him, it's shit is like it ain't about the money, dog. Like mm -hmm. it's like Yeah, he's more he might he he's one of the most extraordinary cats to be around because it's like I've seen him go from what we, you know in my realm to like beyond even Kanye, bro. Mm. And I can say that. I like, you know, it's just Kanye has the mouth. He, you know, you hear him talk a lot. Right, right. But to keep it a buck, bro, Will is like Kanye on step. Mm. My bad. Somebody, 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 somebody gotta call me. So, Imagine you said Kanye on step. Like, like, imagine if Buster Rhymes, if a person that has like Buster Rhymes, uh, like a like, like the 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 the, the lyrical skill of a Buster Rhymes, and people don't even really notice because he don't be. The thing about Whale is he's such a big artist. The shit that he does just for like, like his what he wants to do mm -hmm. that he don't let people hear, mm -hmm. bro. Like. Just imagine if yeah. imagine if Buster Rhymes knew how to make beats on a Kanye West level. Right. That's all I can say, bro. Wow. Like imagine if Buster was a producer. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's some different shit. 
Like somebody that with, with that much, you know, and I have to use say Buster because because Buster can use all kind of different cadences. Right. And like, you know, he can flip all kind of cadences. Will is like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And his beat game, bro, is like, like, like he one of them dudes, we can have a conversation. And I'll be like, yo, remember that joint? Oh, wait, wait. And, and he'll just be like, oh, you mean this? And he'll just do it. He'll do the shit. Like, mm -hmm. like whatever, whatever I want to hear in my head. That dude can literally do it, bro. Like for instance, I just I just recorded with him not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So the, the first joint, and we did all this in one day. The first joint I did, I was like, "Yo, we just we gonna go straight up, to straight hardcore hip hop, no holes barred, no yeah. funny business, no we try not even like we trying to make it. We just I'm going in, give you some some shit, you know what I'm saying? Right, crazy. It's one of them ones, like Nas level, you know. It's one of them, one of the ones made you look type level joints, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next one, I was like, you know what? Now I want to step into your realm. I want to take it to some like, some like, I want to do some like UK, but I want it to be like ghetto, like, like, like twin hype meets, you know, Raekwon or some shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Okay. Like ghetto, like ghetto house music, like a ghetto style of house music. But a style that I can still like rhyme mm -hmm. like, in an intricate way. Yo, he fucking does it. And he does it. Yeah. <laughs> the joint I did was like, yo, I shit you not. When I, when I like, the, the shit that, if, if this shit comes out that we're mm -hmm. doing right now, bro. Yeah. It's definitely Michael Jackson level of hip hop, what I'm doing right now, bro. That's crazy, bro. I think so, bro. Yeah, like, next, like, next level. Cash can't fuck with me, man. I'm going to keep yeah. it a buck, bro. Like, yeah. because. My strategic, my strategic, I mean, it, it took a, it's, it's taken a while, but my strategicness of how I'm doing shit is crazy because I'm doing it for the sake of cats like me and you. Like, mm -hmm. this ain't no fake shit where dudes say that shit and then they go do some other shit. Mm -hmm. This is really the final level. Like, you know what I mean? The final boss of, right. yeah, I'm the final boss of <laughs> this realm of what we love a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, the shit that the, I don't think the world is understanding what they're about to get yeah. in this near future. I have projects right now mm -hmm. that, that I don't think Cats is. Like the, the album me and do that scratch app. We have a full album done. Mm -hmm. Shit been done probably like two and a half years, down to three years. You know? DJ Scratch. Oh, DJ Scratch? Okay. Really? All right. Shit is, and we're going to have volumes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Right, right. Shit is crazy. Like I'm talking about that hip hop shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. When you see it live, and it's like everything you looking for type mm -hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mad, Mad Lib, the shit I got with Mad Lib, mm -hmm. crazy. You know what I'm saying? I got more shit with Evidence. Um, yeah. coming yeah. crazy, and it's just all different. It's not the same tune. You know, a lot of these dudes. It sound like they making the damn near the same record yeah, every time they drop. Yeah, over and over, yeah, yeah. Nah, these shit is different frequencies, bro. Right, right. right. Like, cats gonna be like, how the fuck this cat can change mask like that mm. and still be the same dude? <laughs> you know, mastered your craft. That's why I mastered this shit, G. And I'm not even ashamed to say it. You know what I'm saying? I mastered it, bro. No doubt. No doubt. You know? All right. Um. On your downtime, man, when you riding in your whip, man, what kind of what kind of music you riding to? <laughs> You'll be surprised, man. Oh, no, that's I'll why I asked. I'll be listening to some ratchet ass shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What you be listening to? <laughs> I'll be listening to like uh Matt Dre. Um uh I listen to uh my man Hustler. Okay. Hustle Lassie. Not not Hus Kingpin, but my man Hustle. I listen to Hus Kingpin too, but yeah, my man. To Hus too. Yeah, yeah. Hustler from the Bay. Um uh I listen to uh I uh lately I've been having that old ass E40. Uh okay. which album is that? Uh the one with Sprinkle Me on it uh, and Sideways. Oh, that's, that cool. album. that's that's like early, early E40. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've yeah. been having that in my shit. Oh yeah, yeah, I get ratchet in my shit, man. Ain't nothing but <laughs> uh, drug dealer music in my car. <laughs> I love righteous. I like the right righteous rap, but I love to listen to yeah. you know the other shit. I, you know, yeah. I, I, 
<laughs> you know, that's the thing. That's the thing about being a balanced person is um, I know how to listen listen to different music for what it is. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And that's I, I feel like that's that's one element I feel like hip hop is missing because and it's it's hard for me to say this, but not really no more. I feel like corporate America, not only did they destroy the so-called conscious aspect in the hip hop, not only did they did do that, they started making us it, some kind of fake hip hop patriotism has has went over the so called hip hop community where you where they make you feel like you need to pick and choose between what type of people you you like mm -hmm. and it's like that shit is kind of sad where you know at the end of the day it's still black culture bro you know what I'm saying so yeah, yeah. it ain't it ain't a fucking against the law it ain't against the fucking law for Planet Asia to listen to Lil Boosie nah not at all. Not you know what I'm saying it's not yeah. a fuck against the law for a planet Asian to listen, listen to a Webby or mm -hmm. or or a fucking soldier. But if I feel like it, right, right, because right. like you said, we yeah. had two live crew mm -hmm. back in the day. My problem is, is that they got us both on some unbalanced shit to where that side be like this, that, and the third, and our side be like this, that, and the third. Well, really, when the, when we when we came up, all that shit was under one roof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you don't go to a show to be like they La soul. NWA, yep. LL Cool J, yep. Short, Houdini, you know what I'm saying? You would get a little bit of everything. Yep. Because it was just rap music. Yeah. Yeah. You fuck around, get some mix a lot if you're on the right coast, nigga. You yep. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about, and I ain't right. talking about Posse on Broadway. I'm talking right. about square dance rap. Right. See, a, right. Lot of, a lot of cats, they only know from Posse on Broadway or put them on the glass. I go all the way back to square dance rap. That's crazy. He had the first, a lot of dudes don't know, Sir Mix a lot, he had the first country western rap song. Mm. And it was, it was a big deal out here. I, on the west, I didn't even fucking know that. Bro, on the West Coast, square dance rap was like, because you got to think, that era, that's right when like the freak beats, the freak beat time. So, you know, like, you know, like the, that other type of hip hop, you know, like that 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 Egyptian lover mm -hmm. style, that you know, that, boom, 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 that African yeah, yeah, yeah. type sounding shit, that electronic yeah. breakdance type shit. Mm -hmm. He he can't he came out during that time, so square dance rap had the boom 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 boom. boom. Okay. It had that that type of beat to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, there's so much in this hip hop culture that people don't even be tapping into when they talking mm -hmm. about it because yeah. everybody goes to Biggie, Nas, nice, Pac, like yo, bro, that yo, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Mm -hmm. That shit is still new school to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Biggie and Pac is not old school to me, bro. Right, right, right. You feel what I'm saying? That's not my old school. Mm -hmm. I, in, in my mind, I was competing with the niggas when right, I was in right. high school. Right, right, right. That was my competition. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they're they're not old school to me. Right, old right. school for me. It's before LL and them niggas. Yeah, that's for me too. And now, and now you can call L and them old school now, but be, yo, they just became old school, yeah, right? I'm, like that's I, I'm Generation One Point Five. Like I'm yeah. I'm right outside of uh, Cold Crush Brothers and uh, Africa mm -hmm. Bambada, Soul Sonic Force. Like I'm I'm right after that. Like, how, how old are you? How old are you? I'm fifty six. See, so you you like yeah. thank you. You like yeah. ten years older than me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll be forty. I'll be forty seven next month. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all my old basically, I was raised around cats like you. You gotta think. Mm -hmm. You know my group Cali Agents, right? Yeah. Rasco, right? Rasco is six six years older than me. Okay. Six or seven years older than me. So mm -hmm. you gotta think. I've been knowing him since I was a ninth grader. Mm -hmm. He was already in college when I was in the ninth. Right, right, right. Think now you gotta really gauge that yeah what type of yeah. what type of person i this is my rhyme partner right 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 yeah i was his the person that he was in the group with already had heard me rhyme when i was in junior high mm. they was already in college because the person that that is, is it that he was in the group with is his best friend to this day mm. who happens to dj for us every every now and then mm. rascal Kutcher. he was the main rapper rascal was just a dancer right mm. and uh, Ross Q had already heard me rhyme. Them niggas is six, seven years older than me. They was just in the shit like ultra magnetic MCs. I remember like mm -hmm. thinking that that was like weird music. Like 
the mm-hmm. fuck is this not rhyming rhyming shit right because <laughs> it was like abst- it was like a little abstract for me but then i kind of right. liked it because I'm like this shit is bugged out right right once i once i caught on to what it, what, what it really was i was like oh no this shit is really fresh but right. at first the niggas used to get on my nerves because to me that was old person old people shit i was like like you said it is a, it's an acquired taste <laughs> It's an acquired taste, you know, because in, in teenage years, six years is like 30 years. That's like, yeah, for real. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Because by you being 56, all they friends was like your age. Because mm-hmm. Raz is, um, like I said, he like six, seven years older than me. You would mm-hmm. only be three years older than Raz. All his homies was like your age and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I like... When I used to come to Raz's crib, I was a shorty. He'd be like, get the fuck out of here. You know, I'm cutting hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got my little badass crew. We all dread it out. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. It's about 10 of us. You know what I'm saying? Walking through with Rasta belts on, gold teeth, and you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking shit. I'd be like, yeah, you got to get out. Y'all niggas, y'all little, y'all little young musty niggas got to get out of my living room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's, so when you see Rasco with me, just know that's, that's who he is to me. That's right, 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 right. It, it, right. You know, even though we today it looked like we just two grown men. No, bro. Wow. Yeah. That's my older brother yeah. that used to kick me out of his right. crib and shit when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. Got you. And but right. but I was rhyming before him. Mm. He'll tell you that. I was rhyming before him, even though I was a youngin. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I rapped before him, right? Yeah. So when Rasco got on. When Rascal got on it, because he got in, he got in uh, obviously before me because he was older, right? By the mm-hmm. time he started rhyming, because he rhymed on a song called uh, "Where's My Turban" or some shit on, on on the group he was with that he used to dance for. I don't know why they did that because he 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 blew niggas out the water and wow. end up <laughs> being, being, being becoming. That's where the unassisted song comes from. Right, that song right. unassisted. He was just he just graduated college when he did that, right? Mm. So boom, he left. I'm still in school and shit. I'm like on my second to last year because I was supposed to graduate in 94. I graduated in 95, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, no, no, no. Actually, I had already graduated. So it was like 95. That next year, he dropped under system. My bad. I was a year out of high school already. Mm-hmm. He dropped uh, the single probably like towards the end of that 96. And I remember I was still living with my, at my grand's crib and shit. And he would call me every blue moon or I would call him just to check on him. And he would be Telling me wild shit like, yeah, I just did a show with Big Daddy Kane, or I just did a show with uh, EPMD, or I just did a show with this that person. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, you ain't got a record deal though, right? But I'm like, <laughs> I hear your fucking song right. on college radio really getting played. I'm like, yo, what, what's what is it? He's like, oh, yeah. you know, we, we kind of independent, we pressed our own shit up, and I knew about, but you know, I didn't really respect that at that time because back then it was all about getting a record deal, right? Yeah, I wasn't yeah, trying yeah. to be. The yeah. nigga pressing up his joint. All that shit was like secondhand shit to me, right? right? But I didn't, I didn't really see that this wave that I'm into now mm-hmm. was growing at that time. You got to think, he was peanut butter wolf's roommate. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So he would call me and be like, "Yo, if you think, if you think uh, the world loving me, when they hear you, they gonna wait, wait till the world hear you. They gonna go crazy." And I used to think he was gassing me because I'm like, he must feel, he must feel sorry for me or some shit because of the situation I'm making. You know, I'm, I'm going through that rough right. 18, 19, not knowing what I'm doing with my life. Yeah, you're trying to figure I'm it out. Yelled at, yeah. I'm getting yelled at at the crib. <laughs> I'm fronting and faking like I'm going to school every day. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I haven't even, even enrolled in City College because I'm like, I'm not about to fucking go to school. I'm like, I graduated high school, man. Fuck this shit. I hated, I mm-hmm. hated school. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, nah, so he was like, I'm telling you, I used to think the nigga was gassing me. And so I went out there. I did that verse on Take It Back Home. So it's about mm-hmm. 97 at this point, right? Beginning of 97. Okay. I do that verse on Take It Back Home. Actually, it was 96. It came out 97. I did that verse. But before it even came out, just in that inner circle of like hip hop niggas in the Bay, like, you know, Encore at that time. My man, DJ Architect was my man today. 50 grand. Uh, from homeless derelicts, uh, peanut butter wolf, of course. Um, a lot of you know the living legends. Um, just that whole Bay Area, Saphir, Hobo right. Junctions. You know, at that time, the Bay was like it was like New York because it was mm-hmm. just it was like the hip hop hub, really, because that was the only place I know that a rapper 
outside of New York can press up his own shit, go into the store and walk out with thousands of dollars. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I, I literally seen dudes going there, you know, a hundred CDs, tapes or whatever, and walk out mm -hmm. with a grand, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, it, it, you know, at that time, so boom, I did that one verse and it was just like, world got around town and then, you know, Chick wanted, you know, I, you know, I got to call that yo. This chick, such chick, says if you need a place to stay, you come. <laughs> so that's there. And it's crazy because it was like a mental telepathy thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That was like that was, but I knew. I, and you know, this for everybody. Listen, I'm, I'm showing sure motherfuckers. I'm telling y'all how this shit really goes. This is right. real life shit. I, like you got to really bet on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't have a dollar to my name at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was just like, fuck it. I, I, I'm a yeah. Tell her yeah. Right. I'm going to go hit the couch. I don't even know how I'm going to eat every day, but as long as I'm out there, mm -hmm. close to the music shit, I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. I'm going to make some shit happen. I'm going to yeah. at least get a job because I was always, getting a job wasn't shit for me. Like, mm -hmm. I was the most odd job having nigga there was. You know, <laughs> I don't, to this, and I ain't had a job since the 90s, right. but I, I didn't have so many jobs. I can't tell you how many jobs I've had, bro. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, So, boom. Yeah, I can tell her, hell yeah, boom. I go over there. I only stay there for probably like three months at the most. Mm -hmm. I get I get my job. You know what I'm saying? I, I ended up getting a job at Amoeba. My other uh is a group called uh you know these cats, uh fuck, uh Foreign Legion. Remember Foreign okay, Legion? Foreign Legion. Foreign Legion, uh Zach and the homie, uh uh I forgot the I'm I'm, I'm buzzing right now, but I, I can't forget my man's name. Anyway. They was like, yo, we got a spot. If you know, we uh we got an extra room if you need a uh extra. I'm like, bet I gotta get out of here anyway, because me and her not even getting along like that. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm feeling some kind of way because I done gave her the I done gave her the sausage and she ain't feeding me. So I'm like, that's a no-no. I'm from Northern Cali. Boom. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We go to the uh I go to the I go to the uh I move in with, with Foreign Legion. We got three three beds, but you know, I'm a player. I don't like when I say, I when mm -hmm. I when in my rhymes, when I say I never had a male roommate, mm -hmm. I really be meaning that shit. Them my only, them the only roommates I ever had and I never, bro, I could word to my, to everything I love. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't think I ever slept in my crib over 10 times. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as that happened, I ended up getting you know, older chick, da 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 she mm. cooking Jamaican food every day. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I'm, a, I'm over there. I'm like, yo, you know what, man? I'm out, y'all. Y'all can give this room to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm over here. Boom, boom, boom. And that's how the Planet Asia thing gets on a, you know, I start getting wavy around the city. I'm mm -hmm. doing, you know, Maritime Hall, DNA Lounge. I'm hype man at Parasco first. We going out the country. My first tour was with Jungle Brothers. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, I turned like, 21 or some shit on that tour, you know what I mean? And mm. boom, it was just off to the races. Then I was I started touring so much. Amoeba was like, yo, we gotta let you go because you, you know, you tour. It was, that was one of my favorite jobs because <laughs> all, I, 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 I chose to be a janitor because I didn't want to work no fucking cash register. I was like, yo, mm. let me just be the custodial dude over here. Mm. I got paid exactly what everybody else got paid. It was like nine dollars an hour at that time. Mm -hmm. We got paid every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Nine dollars an hour in fucking ninety uh, seven. Yes, that, that was that was lit. That was decent. That, money was, back lit. Then. <laughs> that was lit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You get the, you know what I mean? And I'm working eight hours. I'm working eight hours a day. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I'm lit. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. like five hundred every Thursday. Some shit like that. <laughs> you feel me? I'm lit. What you talking about? We what? And I got. And I got a little rap money because, you know, you got to think my EP came out. You got to think I, that's my work money. Bro, I'm getting 5000 a month just off of uh, vinyl. Right, right, right. Literally. Five Gs a yeah. month. Mm -hmm. I was making $5,000 a month, bro. Yeah. Just on my first EP. That's crazy. That's crazy. And, it's, and I ain't talking about going out selling it myself. I'm talking about just distributors. Right, right, right. Like, yeah. I ain't even touching the CD or a vinyl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's when that's when Bahamadia used to work at uh the distribution in uh Philly. That's how I ended up meeting her. It mm -hmm. was like so many distributions all around that you could just you could print up a thousand or something, 
Mm-hmm. Them shits be gone. You know what I'm saying? Within yeah. no time. I ain't even nowhere near signing a contract yet. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Boom. right. 97. Boom, so it's 97. Around 90. No, no. About like two, 2000. About, about time 2000 came. 99. About time 99 came, I um we I was already starting to sign deals and shit. We did that new group deal for the Cali and shit. Mm-hmm. Boom. That shit went, you know, it did its numbers, 80,000 first month or some crazy shit. And then, you know, my track, you know, I'm in the fucking Source Magazine every other month. You know what I'm <laughs> I, I do the Land Speed uh, deal through, through my man JF, who I put out the album with last year. And as I'm doing that deal, I'm having a bidding war with major with major la- with major labels. Mm-hmm. I signed the deal with uh for the uh last stand project with uh land speed. I signed the endoscope. So yep. I got yep. I was bro, I was doing Wu-Tang shit without Wu-Tang. I was signing right, right. numerous deals and shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay, this is gonna be my underground EP, and then I'm gonna sign this deal to do the the uh the main the major album, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I, so you know you can only tell you already know what kind of idiot I was being. How much <laughs> buying stupid ass rapper clothes and dumb <laughs> shit. Real, being a dumb, dummy. Yeah, I, but it was a I would you know I wouldn't change it for nothing in my life because I felt yeah. like you know you go to you go to college and you know for business and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I, I feel oh. like I had a one on one crash course in right. business by being able to have to deal with a half a million dollars on my mm-hmm. own, you know what I'm saying? And just budgeting shit, uh, making, uh, you know, making an album, you know, getting different producers from Pete Rock, right. Battle Cat, the fucking, mm-hmm. whoever you can think of, we all in d and studios, we in Power mm-hmm. Play, power, you know, Power Play, we in all these, right, right, you know, right, getting that experience, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's why, you know, what you see today is what you get. Right. Gotcha. You're getting that polished, well polished dude that wasn't too. I wasn't old when I was doing it. So now that I am of age, you get to get all the fucking secret weapons that I accomplished. Gotcha. No doubt, no doubt. You know what I mean, um, that's what makes me great. So anybody out here watching this, it take a <laughs> lot. It take a lot to you to put the work in. You put the work in. Be this type of artist. Yeah, yeah. You put the work in for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Last question, man. Um, Hip hop turned fifty this year. So in the spirit of hip hop being 50, man, what does hip hop mean to you? Hip hop, man, is a culture. It's the only culture that brought every nationality together. It brought all nationalities together. That's, That's the only music that did that. No other music has done it like hip hop. None. Mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, 50 more years of uh, collective consciousness and love, peace, yeah. love, and unity. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the hip hop generation that's that's that makes the changes, man. That's for sure. We the ones that make these that make the changes in the world. Mm-hmm. Everything is hip hop now. Everybody's born in hip hop now. Even a, even yeah. Barack Obama was a hip hop baby. Yep, yep. That was the hip hop president. That's for sure. Run DMC was Run DMC was out when he was in college. Yep. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Oh, so he heard suck MCs <laughs> in his in his dorm room. You heard? <laughs> he was like, "This is that shit right there." Yeah, yeah. Rocking. He probably was. He probably had a pair of shell toes. You know, <laughs> a little fedori, <laughs> a little fedori. You know what I mean? Some gazelles or something. Some, he had something. <laughs> something. You know what I'm saying? Something that was hip hop related, no doubt. Yeah, you know, and, you know, everybody ain't just all the way square. You still gonna yeah, be your yeah. age of age bracket. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hell yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Even, even Tiger Wood had those. No, I'm just right. <laughs> <laughs> Why I say that? Why I say that? <laughs> oh shit, yo, P, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this, bro. I really, really appreciate it, bro. <laughs> What's up? You know what I'm saying I love when I get to have conversations with artists that I that I really fuck with and that I really respect, man. And it's, right. just, it's just a genuine, genuine vibe that goes back and forth, man. And I really, really appreciate that, bro. So right. um we're gonna put you on the cover of the next issue, uh validated man. First, y'all, y'all be the first because I ain't never been on the cover of nothing. Oh, well, you're gonna be on the cover of this one, bro. Yeah. So um actually one more question. Um, uh, what do you have coming out? 
somewhere near the end of this year or going into January so we can like kind of focus on that for the for the issue. Jewelry box sessions, the closing. Jewelry box sessions, the closing. Yeah, double album. Mm, and that's for what the top of the year. I'm trying to drop it before the year's over. Just the year's over. Bang, okay. make his heads up real quick. Like give give cats a, a real Planet <laughs> Asia production. Yeah, because this yeah. is like executive produced by me, so it's from my the people that I like, you know. And it's a it's a ghetto album. It ain't like sardines. It's a ghetto album. It's my hood album. I got a lot of Fresno people on there. And not a lot, but like I got some Fresno talent on there, and it's like it's like my bon voyage to that 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 not to Fresno, but to the, the jewelry box. And I know that my city really loved that album. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of dudes that was locked up, they loved that album. And then, you know, the album had a lot of different shit on it. It had Madeline Beats. It had Sir Veterano Beats. It had it had uh, Black Tobin. You know, it's it was a mixture. It had West Coast and East Coast sounding shit. So mm -hmm. it's like that perfect combination. I'm trying to give cats, okay. not trying, I'm giving cats a classic you need that. double LP as far as like the, the classic double LPs from like, you know, uh, All Eyes on Me. Life after death, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. When, when you know, Wu Tang CD, forever, shit, you know, yeah. certain double yeah. CDs. Just... You couldn't wait to whip the rip the plastic off of those. Yeah, guys. man. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to yeah, give yeah. cats every all the whole feeling, man. Yeah, you know. That's what's up? No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Hey, man. So I'm gonna reach back out to you, man, to get some some good pictures and stuff like that. Some high yes, red points, so we can have a whole you know a, vari a variety to choose from. So we can right. have something for the cover and then have some stuff for the inside spread of the magazine as well. And then when I edit this and chop this up, I'll definitely tag you on everything when I do that. No doubt. No All doubt. Right? Yo, All right, my love, bro. Peace, my G. No doubt. All right. All right, All right.